Take the most important step towards unlocking the next mystery, opening and closing the office door. Light shines between the buildings of New Bug York through the slats in the blinds, illuminating a dame with legs all the way up to her thorax. The smoke swirling around the room conceals her voluptuous exoskeleton more than the dress she was poured into. You could recognize those curves anywhere with your well-trained comments. Blanca Roach. She works part-time at Mr. Dipter's while she finishes nursing school, and it's not uncommon for a potential suitor to present himself while she's on the clock. Blanca clears her throat, <clears> throat> tucks her sunglasses up behind her slicked back antenna, and leans over your desk, leaving little to the imagination. Are you Mr. Fly? Mr. Fly, private eye? She asks. You take one last sip of the whiskey on your desk before reluctantly stashing it in a deep mahogany drawer next to your trusty Colt 38 in your secret stash of circus peanuts. Miss Roach, you respond, causing just to sound a bit cooler. You've come to the right place. Blanca slides a wrinkled and worn piece of paper across the polished wood. I found this on my door yesterday evening she says, failing to hide a twinge of nervousness beneath her sultry voice. I'd like to get you to get to the bottom of it, P.I. She quietly coughs again, <clears throat> covering her mouth with a well-painted set of tarsal claws. Blanca, you make me sick. I'll give you a warning. You should be afraid to ever go outside and relax. <gasps> a desperate bachelor, maybe. Perhaps a jealous dame a dozen. Blanca says the local shops didn't show any suspicious activity on their cameras, so the creep might live in the surrounding apartments. You'd better check the area for clues or other nonsensical bits and bobs that might get you a better sense of the wacky characters in this city. It's a tough job, but you're a tough fly. Bobs, you know, anything that might belong to these lucky characters. There's something on. Hmm. What's this photo doing here? Final photo evidence into your large invisible pocket and gaze out into the smog the way you've seen it do it in the movies. The crimson sunset reflects a thousand times off your matching eyes. You're certain that you look really cool. But it's getting late, so you better head back to the office, turn the evidence onto a corkboard, and unravel the trusty red string. Natalie's oil-stained Mr. Dipter's uniform. It's Natalie the snail. She works the counter alongside Miss Roach. Through your extensive network, you heard a rumor that she's preparing a discrimination lawsuit against her employer. Apparently, snails don't move fast enough for the capitalist regime. Perhaps Natalie has gotten jealous of her co-worker's attention and success. Ollie's tear-stained photo of Natalie. Ollie the Earthworm. He should be a success story as the general manager of Exos, but the gals at the coffee shop gossiped that he got broken up with for working too much. 
He supposed that even the most handsome of gentlemen can't have it all. Maybe his romantic sorrows have driven him to lash out at something he can't have. Rose's ruined Exos merchandise. Rose the rosy maple moth. She has two jobs but steals merchandise like this from at least one of them. You're not sure why she would bother to damage the clothes. You didn't think she was that kind of moth. She seems like a moth with a future wide open to her. She would just grab hold of it. Perhaps the threatening note is just the next step down her wayward path. Luca's draft of a future top pop. Luca the stag beetle. Not much of a stag. You know you've had passing business with his public defendant boyfriend. Luca is the beloved baker at Donato, but his constant singing makes it well known how much he wants to break into the music business. He could be envious of all the free attention that Blanca gets just for her looks. Millie's extraordinarily long Mr. Dipter's receipt. Millie the Millipede. She was left to be a single mother of her 300 children. You wonder how creative one has to be to name that many children. Perhaps one gives up. She doesn't seem like the type to make threats, but maybe all those energetic kids sent her into a fit of delirium. It certainly looks like they eat enough to bounce off the walls. Vladimir's sweat-encrusted dumbbell. Vladimir the Ladybug. He's an easy man to recognize on the street. You won't be seeing another ladybug wielding such muscular guns. You know he supposedly works as a bartender at Thrift Strip, but it seems like he's at the gym every hour of the day. Your friend who drinks too much says he believes conspiracy theories about the secret fungi government. Maybe he's slowly built up enough delusions to crack. think this is remotely relevant to the case, but its tender marshmallow constitution beckons to you. You tuck it into your invisible pocket for later. <sighs> you squint at the board and ponder the situation. Every one of these unusually diverse clowns is a potential motive to play a creepy weirdo in this real-life drama. Hmm, you say. Or was that the sound of your wings? If the culprit is a weirdo, then Better look for something weird. It took you all night to set up this blasted cork board, so it's time to head out again. You grab a handful of circus peanuts for the road, for the sky, for that middle ground where you're in the air but not so high that you really want to call it the sky. Look for something weird, like a. stuck to her sake. Seems like she's trying not to make eye contact. instincts have never steered you wrong. You can feel the innate importance of these impertinences deep down within your minuscule gut. Better fly back to the office to take a closer look. You 
rummage around in your invisible pockets and pull out the photos. A circus peanut falls to the floor. It's not a good time to eat. There are secrets to uncover. Putting each picture onto the corkboard, your tiny fly brain works in overdrive to pick out the information you know resides within. You look down the list. Hammer. Dagger. Rocket. Toothbrush. Apple. Oat milk. Radio. Or. Pie. It's a long shot, but your sleuthing senses are tingling. Something must be correlated to the first letter of each item. Extraordinarily long word. But this is a game about bugs, so I think we know the answer. Arthropod. A. R. T. Yes, of course. You should have thought of this earlier, you undeniable genius. There's no other bug in this town who could have put together this deduction so fast. Obviously, this rules out Snatterly and Ollie, the only nonthropods on the suspect list. Their slick bodies would have left an incriminating mucus trail outside Blanca's apartment door. That's two suspects to drop off the list. Easy. But you can't waste any time here. The citizens of New Bug York are in danger with a fruitcake like this on the loose. There's still too many suspects remaining. You've got to cut down on the numbers. Cut down the numbers, I shall. Look at all of them. Stronger than he did yesterday. You can almost make out whispers about fungal conspiracies. Natalie the snail. She looks more dressed up than usual. Either to make someone jealous or for her court case against Mr. Dictors. Precisely the same number of spots on Vladimir's shiny dome. This can't be. Your extraordinary deductive thinking is interrupted by the abrupt ringing of the retrophone you found at a Sela celebrity's estate sale. You lift the receiver to your antenna and jot down a report from your detective buddy who works in the precinct. He says that. Cripes, your second vintage phone is ringing another hysterical missy with a convoluted mystery. You explain to the last that you'd love to help her out, Tuts, but you're up to your eyeballs and all this weird puzzle crap. You hang up. What was your buddy saying? 
Vladimir the Seven Spotted Ladybug was spotted in the gym at seven, the same time that Blanca heard noises outside her door. Another suspect to cross off the list. But this is still dragging itself out. We thought this would be an open and shut case, but it seems like it's more like finding a needle in a haystack. You think a needle would be too hard to find, so you'd rather look for larger selling supplies. down, but her hundreds of offspring are nowhere to be seen. Everyone deserves a break. this in a moment. Another break in the case. Another absolute victory for P.I. Fly. This newfound ketchup discovery definitively rules out Rose as a suspect because obviously adult rosy maple moths don't eat. In fact, they don't even have mouths. You briefly ponder the logistics of such a life. It's no wonder that someone like that could turn to a life of petty crime. You decide not to snitch on her. Snitches get stitches, like the ones she ruined. Although you'd be able to fix them with all the sewing supplies you've acquired. On the other Tarsus, the small bit of paper and tape stuck to one of the machines gives you an upsetting revelation. That note that Blanca found. What if there was more? What if this sick villain is threatening other innocent members of your public? This cannot stand. You must find out if there are any more pulpy traces of evil in New Bug York.
I've never steered you wrong. This is damning evidence of further crime happening under your many-faceted watch. Let's wrap this thing up and restore peace to the city. You rummage around in your mahogany drawers for a roll of tape. It's awkwardly large for your insect body, so it's fortunate that you've been following those jazzercise VHS recordings that you found in your mother's closet. You just have to put this incriminating evidence back together to find this sicko and bring them to justice. Cripes, that's a lot of pieces of paper. an intriguing development. I'm worried when you get my homemade soup. Just wait till it's cooled. Don't call if you need me. And in the fresh air. From Millie. You ring up the dame who kicked off this whole fiasco to break it to her. Here's your Order. That's Millie trying to leave the nook. And her kids. Oh, her kids. So you see, sweetheart, it was all just a misunderstanding, you say at the tail end of your explanation. Blanca stares sheepishly at your desk. Blanca, you make me worried when you get sick. I'll give you my homemade soup. Just a warning, you should wait till it's cold. Don't be afraid to ever call if you need me. And go outside and relax in the fresh air. X, 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 Millie. Oh. I suppose that accounts for the confusing things Millie was saying to me about soup during my last shift. I just pretended like I understood her to avoid dealing with an uncomfortable social situation. How embarrassing. You respond with a clever one-liner that you spent the last 15 minutes thinking up. She's not impressed and begrudgingly hands over her payment. You've earned yourself 20 smackaroons for this bang-up job. You even lock down another gig with Millie to help her figure out which dozen of her kids to scold. However, looking at your notes, it seems like your suspect list is now 300 bugs long. The end? <laughs>